Hello, I'm Sais Barrier. And I'm Charlie Adlard. Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I am Andrew Sumner. I am here with two legends of British comics. And I don't use that word lightly. The one and only Simon Spurrier and the one and only Charlie Adlard. How are you, gents? Very good. Very good. Thank you, Andrew. It is great to see you both, and uh, thank you very much for joining me. You're here to talk about uh, your all-new Boom Studios book, about which we're all very excited. Uh, Forbidden Planet's head comics buyer, Rob Pontefract, our mutual friend, is very, very excited by this book, as am I, and that is Damn Them All. So, uh, guys, what can you tell me about? What can you tell me about the fabric of the narrative of Damn Them All first? Oof. Uh... Okay, so like tonal locator, um, cheap, lazy elevator pitch is, um, it's like Get Carter meets The Exorcist. So uh, kind of grimy UK crime crashing headlong into uh, demonology and, and sort of spooky vibes. The, the basic setup, and, and it's one of those stories where we keep pulling the rug out every time you think that you've you've got it but the basic setup for what it's worth is that um the greatest occultist in britain dies and at the same time clearly no coincidence the 72 evil spirits listed in the Ars Goetia as the kings and princes and dukes and earls and marquises of hell are suddenly out in the world, available to summoners and amateur magicians and anybody with a, a little bit of a penchant for occultism to conjure and use. And chaos ensues, as you would expect, and it, it falls to the dead magician's niece, um, a troubled thug, <laughs> basically, uh, who, who kind of styles herself as uh, an occultist for hire, but frankly does far more leg breaking and, and bouncing jobs because there isn't much call up to this point for, for an occultist for hire in London to try and deal with this insanity she's called ellie hawthorne she goes by bloody l um she's she's a sort of uh very surly very cynical but quite damaged and and sort of quietly vulnerable individual who carries a claw hammer claiming that it's a magical claw hammer it's not it's just a big fucking claw hammer um <laughs> She's awesome. And, and yeah, I will, I will turn over to, to my esteemed colleague to talk about how beautiful it all looks. <laughs> and, and by the way, the, uh, our mutual friends at Boom, Philip Sablick and the gang over there, uh, very kindly uh, shared a PDF of issue one with me. So I know how beautiful it looks. It looks amazing. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing this, Charlie. Well, thank you. Um, well, you. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, I mean, sides pretty much summed up. I don't really know what, what else to say in terms of, of the plot, but um, it's kind of the book myself for myself personally is kind of artistically my sweet spot. Um, it's realistic, it's dark, it's gritty, all those sort of cliches, but it's the stuff I love drawing. Um, you know, I've never professed to being a particularly good superhero artist, so uh, that avenue is definitely out for me in terms of, well, you know, in getting in there, sort of, I suppose the popular, the popular side of it. So um, yeah, let's stick to what I know. And damn them all is definitely what I know and love. What guys, what was the approach road to you working together on this book? Oh, um, well, I, I, I think it's fair to say we both appreciate each other's set of skills <laughs> and um i don't well it's no insult to say to say i don't think it's any different to me working with uh, other writers i've worked with in terms of how we work together you know it's the usual script art you know interaction kind of thing um but it's been 
you know, I, I've read those scripts and I've certainly not felt the need to ask for changes or anything else like that. So uh, I think I think just just by that sort of fact, I think they are, you know, they're wonderful scripts to work on. So hopefully the artwork is reflecting that um, really majesty in writing. I do, uh, as a as a, a, a slight note, do to mention that uh, that DPS you drew a couple of weeks ago, and when the when the pencils came in, Charlie had written in pencil underneath the main panel, "I am never drawing anything like this again." <laughs> Quite a difficult one, um, but uh, but no, it's um, uh, I have a long working relationship with Boom. My editor there, Eric, is exceptional. You know, one of those editors yeah. that you you sort of um big grudge but also are aware of how priceless they are because his notes are are exceptional um i had this idea for something along the lines what eventually became damn them all at around the same time uh, as i understand it charlie was noticing that a lot of his favorite comics were being put out by boom so he was approaching them and the the gears just sort of meshed um as charlie mm -hmm. says we we've both known each other mostly from convention bars uh, for many years and and have always the only way right well that's that's where it all happens isn't it and, and yeah. we've always sort of said wouldn't it be nice to work together and, and it, it just sort of all aligned it was weird boom believe it or not over nearly 30 years as a jobbing cartoonist um boom pretty much had been the only publisher of, and this was only very fairly, fairly recently um that I contacted initially before um, before they came to me about it or saw about the project, um, only because I suddenly realised that you know the comics I've been reading recently, and you know, I don't, to be honest, I haven't got the time to read that many, but the few that I have been reading, the majority of them suddenly were boom comics, and I was thinking, huh, this is a bit of a uh, a, co a weird thing you know um so i felt that almost the urge just to sort of contact someone at boom to say this is this is the situation if, if we can ever work together because they seem to be hitting my sort of you know sweet spot creatively um if we could ever work together you know i'd, I'd love to try something and then of course the planets aligned with me and signed it was magic all the way <laughs> That, that is, in fact, precisely what I was just about to ask. It's whether you guys worked on this together, came up with the pitch and went to being with it, or whether it was more you stepped forward with the idea sign there and then it was it was the perfect book for, for Charlie to jump on with. Um, it's it's There isn't a, a simple answer to that. But the, the pitch certainly existed before we knew Charlie was involved, but as as is the case, as is the absolute perfect case with all these things, the simple involvement of um an artist of caliber let alone one of charlie's caliber who has creative ideas it, it automatically the the look of the thing adjusts the tone of the thing which adjusts the plot of the thing and and you know it it, it was sort of all there in in a sort of inchoate version before charlie came aboard but by having charlie in the room and doing what he does we have tweaked certain elements and we've steered it in a slightly different way and it's it's sort of become far greater than the sum of its parts as a result that's as a writer that's how you know you're working with a good artist because it ceases to be something that you envisaged and all you can think of is the the parts where the artist has <laughs> veered away from your ingenious vision and you start instead to think of it as a collaborative product of of all these different moving parts and it's it's generally speaking much better as a result and, and that's definitely the case for this wonderful um guys there's the, something that i love about issue one is uh it's got a, a, a really quite powerful use of of text pieces which i i think that's a device that um not many people can actually master and get right. You know, there are there are classic examples. Alan Moore being the best example, I think, of somebody who can seam that into the sew that into the narrative and it works. But this works really well. Can you talk about that a bit, Simon? Um, yeah, it's it's something I've I've fiddled with in the past. Um, so what we're referring to here, just for your listeners, is um, between panels. We often drop in chunks of narrative text which sit outside of the artwork they don't obstruct any art now 
instinctively, and I'm, I'm not sure why, but this seems to work far better for primary, horror-y, noir -y sorts of stories. I suspect it has something to do with um, this notion that the best horror and the best sort of creepy stuff tends to relate to things that you're planting in the reader's mind rather than things that you're just showing them outright. Um, it's also, rightly or wrongly, it, it sort of connotes a grown-up reading experience. It speaks to sophistication, it speaks to, to confidence, hopefully, but also at the same time to a sort of neurotic need to be experienced in the character's voices, which is very strong and important to me. It does not work with every artist's work. And it, it just fits so beautifully with Charlie's particular style, the use of light and dark. Sophie's colors are very helpful to this because they're, they're able to sort of delineate graphically areas on the page, which feel like this is, this is here for text and this is here for visuals. Um, there will be readers who are most familiar with a you know uh, three panels per page superhero experience when you you pay your five dollars and it takes you 10 minutes to read the book who will probably take a look at certain pages and go whoa that's a lot of text i didn't expect to be reading a novel um we can't help that other than to say give it a go because it's it's a really interesting reading experience and you do get your bang for your buck. It's it's a dense read. It'll take you a chunk of time to read. I think it rewards rereads. Um, but yeah, it just it seems to us to be a really nice way of using text as a graphic element to support the art, rather than for it to just be this sort of everything has to be drawn visual or everything has to be textual. It's it's a really interesting um design oriented combination of those things which utilizes the skills of everybody in the team including the letterer jim um and and to to harp on about what i was saying before it really therefore does become far greater than the sum of its parts but uh, yeah I've, I've always been a big fan of dense reads myself as uh, i think i think always you know as as great as the 22 page whatever however many page format of an american monthly comic book is I think over, especially over the last, say, since the 80s, probably, um, there's always sometimes there's been a penchant for the for the for it to be too languid, um, for it to just not, you know, for certain writers and artists to experiment with the form and basically not give us much of a story. And and you end up looking at this thing going, you've read it within. 10 minutes and you just think well was that worth my however many dollars I've spent on this you know I'm, I'm not saying it should only be one way but sometimes it's worth doing something like that but quite often it just denotes lazy storytelling in my opinion and I've also always been a massive fan of uh, French Bond Désiné as well and of course, the storytelling and stuff like that, generally speaking, is incredibly condensed because of their format. So I love the idea of giving readers, you know, this amount of stuff to make them feel like, whoa, I've really, really read something really dense here. Um, you know, if you're using a movie analogy, um, a lot of miniseries, say six issue miniseries, a lot of them you read and you think, God, that's probably about half an hour's worth of movie there. You know, uh, we'd like to think that Dan Moore is a whole season of TV or, or a good two hour movie or whatever. Um, yeah. But by the time you've read it and you've, you've, you've digested it all, and that's how I think that's how it should be, definitely. Yeah, it, exactly that. And it, that, that mechanism lets you fiddle with narrative voices quite successfully. For instance, the the first two issues are told very much from the point of view of our central character, and the second two issues are told from the point of view of a completely different character. Oh, interesting. And, and so on. You can keep sort of messing around with that stuff without losing the sensation of it all being a cohesive, self-contained story. Um, yeah, I just I feel like uh, as creators, there are so many tools in our toolbox, and not not all of them get used very often. So it's nice to be able to just play with play with these little mechanisms that that we uh, we allow to gather dust between stories i think uh, as a as a um, 
a, a reader, a, a lifelong reader of comic books, an editor, and an appreciator of your work. I think um, I think it the, the device works spectacularly well in this first issue, which is which for everybody watching this, I'm here to tell you is extremely dynamic, and I think your your text pieces undoubtedly enhance the experience, give you that depth. But while while there's this supreme diamond dynamism and propulsivity to that first issue, which ends by the way on just a fantastic kind of cliffhanger, you know that would do Republic Pictures proud. I, I really I really enjoyed that moment and. Uh, Without spoiling it for anybody who is is watching, very much looking forward to seeing how that moves on in issue two. It, it's a fantastic job, and this this hugely propulsive first issue, debut issue of Damn Them All, is available from the links attached to our conversation. And not only that, but Charlie and Simon will be joining us at Forbidden Planet London, one seven nine Shaftesbury Avenue, on the twenty ninth of October at 1 p.m. and they'll be there signing that issue one in store on that day so if you fancy coming and meeting the guys and talking to them about their spectacular work that is the opportunity guys w w myself and rob are very excited that you're coming in and we're looking forward to seeing you yeah likewise yeah absolutely can't wait no it's uh, it's been a while since i've been down to fp in london to do a signing anyway so yeah. uh well yeah it's been it's, it's been my a, big return <laughs> it's been a, the, the big return of charlie adlard yeah amazing and um guys congratulations on issue one uh we, we, again myself and rob love it and i'm sure everybody watching this is gonna love it and i can't wait to see where you go from this point and thanks very much for joining me today thank you for having us cheers andrew thank you if you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.